Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Cheese Company will also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night. Present each week at this time Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. We'll hear from The Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, if you live in the South, you've probably already harvested many good things from your victory garden. If you live in the North, the first tender green shoots are pushing their way through the soil. Wherever you live, the chances are you're congratulating yourself on hard work that's worth it because you're providing your family with wholesome, good-tasting food. Kraft, the makers of parquet margarine, get much the same feeling of satisfaction, too, in making a food that fits in so well with your cash and ration stamp budgets. For parquet margarine requires just five red ration points a pound. And besides being a delicious, appetizing spread for bread... It's also a fine seasoning that'll add delicate extra flavor to garden vegetables served piping hot on your table. Yes, and parquet is a real flavor shortening for your home baking, and it's grand for pan frying, too. What's more, parquet is one of the best energy foods you can serve, and it contains vitamin A. So ask your dealer for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve in Summerfield. It's a beautiful Saturday morning in May, the kind of a Saturday morning that makes a man think twice before he starts down to the office. Mr. Gildersleeve, who is strictly human, has thought twice and is about to think again when the doorbell rings. Oh, who the... I think it's a postman, Leroy. Postman? Gee, maybe he's got my stuff. Huh? Hi, Mr. Underwood. Hello there, young fellow. I've got something for you if you've got 97 cents for me. 97? Mm, just a second. Say, Uncle, could I have my allowance now, please? Well, I guess so. Let me see. Uh, I haven't got 50 cents in change. Isn't that so? Well, it's funny. I was about to ask for a slight advance anyhow. Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah, yeah, very funny. <laughs> hey, hurry up, son. The United States mail waits for no man. Well, Uncle, um, please, just once. It's an emergency. Well, all right. Here, pay the man, and we'll discuss it later. Gee, thanks, Uncle. Huh? Here's the money, Mr. Underwood. All right, Sonny, thanks. Oh, boy, this is it. From the Lincoln Novelty Company. Wait a minute. I thought this was an emergency. Well, it is. Tomorrow's Tom Ladd's birthday. Oh. So naturally, I had to get him some kind of remembrance, something worthwhile. Uh, what'd you get him? Oh, a few novelties. Yeah, novelties? What are they, Leroy? Oh, just little things this boy would like. Young man, let me see that package. Oh, no, long. From the Lincoln Novelty Company, the boy's best friend since 1878. What are you buying from him, Leroy? Of course, the greatest thing you ever saw. You put it in your mouth and you can throw your voice anywhere. It makes you a regular ventriloquist. Leroy, I bought one of those things 25 years ago and it's no good. Mm. Gosh, what do you expect for a dime, Edgar Bergen? Besides, they've improved it. Never mind. That's a dime. Now, what else did you spend the money for? Well, there's this certain powder. Yeah, sneezing powder? Uh, partly. Itching powder? Yeah. Did you try that too, Unc? Yeah, but you won't. <laughs> My father gave me a licking. I'll never forget for that. Well, I guess parents didn't understand children in those days, did they, Unc? I think they understood them pretty well, Leroy. I'm going to explain a few things to you right now. Oh, for corn's sake. Just because I want to borrow 47 cents. It's not the 47 cents, my boy. It's your whole conception of money. Where it comes from, what it's for. Now, if you had a job, as many boys do at your age... Can I get a job, Unc? I think it'll do you good. Teach you the value of a dollar, the dignity of honest labor. I think it'd be fine for you to get a job, Leroy. Earn a dollar or two every week, perhaps? A dollar or two? Are you kidding? I can go right down to a cartridge factory and knock off thirty-seven fifty every Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, that's what Hector Briggs makes. Never and... mind. You'll get a part-time job that you can handle after school or you'll have none. Now, do you want it? Oh, sure, it's better than nothing. Well, where am I going to get one? I'll get one for you. Oh, my goodness, it's 11 o'clock. If I don't get to work pretty soon, people will say I'm a part-time water commissioner. Don't worry, Leroy. I'll get you a job. Come 
Come in, Gildy. Come in. Uh, hello, Judge. Uh, Horace, I come to ask your advice. Well, well, I don't know why you didn't come to me long ago. What do you mean? Throckmorton, you and I are old friends, aren't we? That's right, Horace. We've been through a lot together, haven't we? That's right. I guess we don't have to beat around the bush with each other, do we? Certainly not. Gildy, let's face it. Marriage is a wonderful institution, but it's not for us. You, what? Well, now, now, don't misunderstand me. Leela Ransom is a fine woman. Hooker, I don't know what you're talking about. What I'm talking about has nothing to do with Leela Ransom, and I'll thank you to keep her out of this. Sorry, Gildy. Sorry, old man. Sorry. Sorry. All right. If I spoke out of turn, I'm sorry. All right. I could bite my tongue off. You don't have to do that. <laughs> 10,000 pardons, old man. I'm sorry. All right, you're sorry. <laughs> what I came here to talk to you about is Leroy, Judge. Leroy? Well, what has our young friend got himself into now? Nothing. It's just what I'm afraid he might get into. I think he needs something to keep him out of mischief, Judge. I think he ought to have a job. Best thing in the world for him. Oh, you think so? Absolutely. Well, I'm glad to know you feel that way about it. Uh, Horace. Yes, Gildy? You and I are old friends, aren't we? That's right, Gildy. We've been through a lot together, you and I. We certainly have. You know, Horace, if you had a son... That's one of the sorrows of my life, Gildy. But I haven't a son. I know. But if you had a son, and say that son was at the age where he was ready to take a job... Yeah? Do you know I'd feel positively hurt if you didn't send him to me for a job first? Would you, Gildy? Absolutely. I'd feel downright hurt. Now, I haven't any son either, but I have got a nephew, Judge. Gildy, do you mean you want me to give Leroy a job? That's right. <laughs> Are you kidding? Uh, all right, Hooker, try and get any favors out of me. Is that you, Unc? Yes, Leroy. And I'd like a word with you. Unc, guess what? I've got a surprise. Well, that's fine. But suppose you save it for a moment. Leroy, I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint you. Disappoint me? Yes, my boy. I, I promised this morning that I'd get you a job, but I find it's not as easy as I thought. Yeah, but, Uncle... Well, please let me finish. I realized that you'd be disappointed, so I decided I'd give you a job myself. At your office? No, right here, my boy, mowing the lawn. Well, I did that last summer. I know, but this summer I'll pay you. <laughs> uh, shall we consider it settled? Well, there's just one catch, Unc. What's that? I got a job myself this afternoon. Peavy's Drugstore. What? I start tomorrow. See you later, Unc. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, uh, who's going to mow the lawn? Leroy? Uh, Leroy? Huh? Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Peavy. Uh, just straightening out the magazines here. I'll have them fixed in two shakes. That's all right. You go ahead and read the comics if you want. <laughs> no harm in that. I just wanted to say I'm going to leave you in charge here for a few minutes. Oh, boy, my big opportunity. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I'll only be a minute. I, I just got a little errand for Mrs. Peavy before the butcher shop closes. Veal cutlet. Well, I'll take your time, Mr. Peavy. I can handle the store. Well, I think you can. There's just one or two things before I go, if you don't mind, Leroy. Yes, sir? I've noticed when you answer the phone, you've been saying Peavy's Pharmacy. Well, don't you like that? Well, no, I, I think that's a little flashy. I prefer just a very conservative hello. Oh, all right, Mr. Peavy, I'll remember. And the only other thing is this. Don't prescribe for people. Well, I thought that was what brothers were for. Pharmacists, Leroy. We are pharmacists. Oh, I forgot. No, we never prescribe. I made an arrangement to that effect with Dr. Pettibone some years ago. <laughs> we agreed that I wouldn't try to cure his patients and he wouldn't make any ice cream sodas. <laughs> Just be careful, that's all. Oh, hello, Piggy. Hiya, Mr. Peavy. Hi, Leroy. Hi. I guess I can trust you to wait on your young friend here, Leroy. I'll be back shortly. Hey, you, put down that comic book. I'm just looking at it. Well, Dom, I just finished straightening up those magazines. I could look at it if I want to. Not unless I say so. I'm in charge here. Oh, 
say so. I say so. Who are you? You'll find out. <laughs> Listen, Banks, drop that book. Okay, okay. Keep your hands off things, see? I'm in charge here. I'm responsible. Don't want to look at your old comics anyway. I've read them all. And don't be swinging on that seat. You're liable to bust it. Come on, come on. What do you want here? I want some candy. How much money you got? Oh, don't worry. I've got the money. My money you'll ever see. Oh, yeah? You know how much money I make here? Three dollars a week. Yeah. I do. And you know how much that is in a year? About a hundred and fifty bucks. Gosh. What are you going to do with it all? Mm, I haven't decided yet. Probably buy a drum and a set of claps. Real ones? Of course, real ones. What do you think? Gosh. Will you let anybody else play it? Don't make me laugh. This is a very valuable drum I'm going to buy. <laughs> um, Leroy. What? I'll tell you something if you'll tell me something. What? Who's your best friend? Mm, I don't know. I've got a lot of friends. I'll have to think it over. You know who my best friend is? Who cares? Come on, are you going to buy anything or aren't you? Sure. Sure, I'm going to buy some candy. And if I thought you were a friend of mine, I'd give you some of it. Candy? I can eat all I want of it here. Make up your mind. What do you want? Uh, give me a jazz bar. Let me see your nickel. Why? I have to see your money first. Who says so? I say so. Who are you? You'll find out. <laughs> Well, what's going on here? Just making a sale. Sounds more as if you were killing one. <laughs> uh, well, hello, Piggy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Here's your candy, thanks. That'll be one nickel with tax. Well, Uncle, what can I do for you today? Leroy. Yes? What are you going to do with that nickel? Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Want to watch that, young man? Yes, sir. <laughs> before I beat your brains in. Uh, Leroy, that's not the way to speak to a customer. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, that is Mr. Peavy. What do you have, Unc? Uh, nothing, my boy. I happened to be driving by, and I thought if you were through here, maybe you'd like a ride home. Well, gosh, that's nice of you, but it's a little early, isn't it, Unc? Well, I think if I speak to Mr. Peavy, I can get him to let you off. Gee, thanks. Uh, oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Peavy. I just dropped in to ask if I could borrow this boy of mine for the rest of the afternoon. Well, certainly, Mr. Gildersleeve. I don't think I'll be needing him. <laughs> well, thanks, Peavy. Yeah, thanks. You know how it is. Grass is getting a little long there at home. Grass? Uh, I quite understand. Yeah, you didn't say anything Keep about... quiet, Leroy. I'll tell you what I'll do, Peavy. I'll hire him back from you. Fifty cents for the rest of the afternoon. Well, it won't be... Uh... Oh, excuse me. Telephone. Yeah. And if you need him for any deliveries, just phone and I'll send him right over. Hello? But, Doc, um, fifty cents to move the lawn. I don't even get the fifty cents. Well, that's business, my boy. Business? That's slavery. Yes, it is. <laughs> you can't do it, Uncle. It's against the Constitution. It's quiet, you. How can Mr. Peavy telephone? Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that. And maybe this will be a lesson to you, young man, not to try to match wits with your uncle. Yes, indeed. Right away. Well, I guess we'll be running along then, oh, Peavy. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm terribly sorry. What is it? They just phoned from Judge Hooker's house. Judge yeah, Hooker? It seems the old gentleman has just had a sudden attack of indigestion, and I, uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to send Leroy out with some epicac. Hooray! I mean, uh, gosh, that's too bad. <laughs> Why, the old goat. Why doesn't he watch out what he eats? Who does he think he is, a ten-year-old? No wonder he gets the cobbly wobbles. You know what I think, Peavy? I think he did this deliberately. Well, now, I, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, he did. He did this just to spite me. Oh! Leroy. What a character. The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. Now, I believe I've said all I need to about parquet, the delicious margarine made by Kraft. You know it's nourishing, and you know it tastes good. So now I'm going to talk about the men and women behind the counter in your favorite food store. I'm going to talk about them because they deserve a word of praise for the perfectly marvelous job they're doing in these trying times. The people in grocery stores have always worked hard. But in these days, with shortages of help, shortages of food, and food rationing, well, they really have a job to do. And believe me, they're doing it. 
They're doing a job for the manufacturers of food, for you, and for Uncle Sam. And in spite of the fact that point rationing is many times more complicated for them than for any of us, they carry on cheerfully, patiently, long hours, day in and day out. Without the willing cooperation of the grocer and his helpers, rationing could not succeed, nor could any of us eat as well as we're eating. Now, there are no awards of merit for these hard-working patriots, but they, too, are helping to win the war. Let's give them our support by budgeting ration points ahead, by shopping early in the day and early in the week. Now, let's return to Summerfield. After a week with Leroy working for Peavy, Gildersleeve's lawn has become almost a jungle, and if he's ever to conquer it, it must be done today. So while Marjorie lolls in the hammock, we find him reluctantly trundling the mower out of his garage and calling upon the spirits of his ancestors to give him strength. Uh, 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 grass. Everywhere you look, nothing but grass. I hate the stuff. Talking to me, Uncle Moore? No, I'm talking to myself, my dear. I'm talking to the grass. <laughs> Yeah, all right, you can laugh. You're a woman, Marjorie. You don't have to wrestle with it. <laughs> we could always get a goat. A yeah, goat? For this grass, we'd have to get a goat with a motor on it. <laughs> Why not? A motor goat. <laughs> uh, a motor goat. You couldn't get any self-respecting goat to do this kind of work. It takes a dumb beast like a man. Oh, Uncle Mo. That's all I am, just a beast of burden, my dear, a slave. All day long, up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, is that any kind of a life? Oh, it'll probably be the making of you. A little exercise? In all this heat? It's the worst thing in the world for me. Say, I know. What? I was to run in and send Bertie out with a nice big pitcher of lemonade, huh? That might help. All right, if you'd like. Uh, and some lady fingers to go with it. But we've just finished lunch. Well, you can't run an engine without fuel, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Motor goat. Uh, this darn lawn. What good is it? We never play croquet anyway. Uh, well, here goes. Ross Martin. Oh, uh, Leela. Can I interrupt in something, Ross Martin? Oh, that's all right. I haven't really started here yet. Come on, Leela. Let's sit down here on the grass, huh? Shall we? All right, let's. Oh, this is nice. You know what I love? Huh? I love to run my fingers through the nice, soft grass and feel the warm earth underneath. <laughs> Don't you? Yes, and feel those darn little roots pushing it up, pushing it up. <laughs> oh, oh, silly. Yeah. Listen, Leela. What? I think I can hear it growing. <laughs> Martin, I love you when you're like this. Like what? Silly. Uh, silly? Well, what's silly about it? You don't realize I have to mow all this. Every blade of it. As far as the eye can reach. All by myself. And today. Oh, then, Throckmorton, I'd better be going so you can get at it. Oh, uh, Leela, don't rush off. No. I was going to ask you to do something. Oh, I'd love to, Leela. No, not till you finish this. Well, tell me what it is. No, Throckmorton, not till you're through here. Oh, please. No. Uh, pretty please? No. Throckmorton, let go. Here comes Bert. Huh? Uh, after I finished, will you? After you finish. So you hurry up and get to work now, you hear? Uh, darn lawn. Well... Here goes. Here's your lemonade, Mr. Gill, please. Oh, uh, just in the nick of time, Bertie. Say, it looks mighty good, too. Yes, sir. Here's a glass. Oh, never mind the glass. I'll just drink it out of the pitcher, like this. <laughs> Look out there, Mr. Gill, please. Look out, you don't fall in. <laughs> <laughs> what a man. Mr. <laughs> Gill, please, you better come up for air. Uh, I tell you, there's nothing like a pitcher of lemonade after a hard day's mowing. <laughs> Pretty good before it, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Bertie. Oh, uh, say, by the way, Bertie. Yes, sir? Uh, tell me something. Don't you get awfully tired of staying in that hot kitchen all day long? <laughs> well, sir, I was mostly brung up in hot kitchens, so I guess I'm kind of used to it. My blood got thinned out or something. Yeah. Wouldn't you like to get outdoors once in a while and get a little fresh air? Oh, Mr. Gilfried, it's so long now since I had any fresh air, I don't know how I could handle it. <laughs> Nonsense. Fresh air is good for you, Bertie. Yes, uh, sir. Do you know anything about lawnmowers, Bertie? Well, yes, sir. I know the main thing about them. What's that? Keep away from them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
this will be the death of me yet. Uh, grass, it sneaks up on you. It grows when your back is turned. Hi there, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, Ben. Hello, Ben. Hi. Well, I haven't seen you around here lately, my boy. Oh, I've been kind of busy. Well, I'll see you're doing a little lawn mowing. Yeah, just mowing the lawn. Yeah. <laughs> great exercise. Great for the stomach muscles. Uh, yeah, great. <laughs> Is uh, Marge around? Marge? Well, she's inside there somewhere. Oh, good. Oh, uh, Ben? Yes, sir? Uh, you're a mechanic, Ben. I wonder if you'd come here a minute and take a look at this confounded lawnmower. Oh, is there something wrong with it? Well, I don't know if there's anything really wrong, but it seems to push awful hard. Oh, well, maybe you got it set too tight. Huh? Yeah? Let's turn her over and take a look. Yeah, you go right ahead, Ben. Yeah. Seems to spin all right. Oh? Uh-huh. Have you tried it? Have I tried it? I've been at this thing since lunch. I mowed clear down to that hedge and back, Ben. Huh. Funny, I uh, don't know what it could be, then. I'll tell you what. You try it, huh? Maybe I just haven't got the knack of it. Oh, well, all right, sure. Yeah, here. Better take your coat off, Ben. I'll hold it. Oh, I don't need to take my coat off just to try it. Oh, well, I know, but it's a hot day. You better give it to me. Don't you do it, Ben. Uh, oh, Marge. Uh. Gosh, I didn't see you. Neither did I. <laughs> How long have you been standing there, my dear? Long enough to see what's going on. Now, Marjorie, nothing was further from... (laughs) Nothing was further from my mind. Then what? Then, uh, you know. (laughs) All right, put your coat on, Ben. You're through for the day. Oh, uh, you dropped something there, my boy. Oh, my poppy. Uh, Poppy day. (laughs) I suppose some pretty girl sold you that. Uh, Yeah, she was, kind of... (laughs) Now, Margie, <laughs> nothing wrong with Ben's buying a poppy. Poppy Day is a very, very worthy cause. Only joking, Uncle Mort. I'm only jealous because he didn't buy it for me. Oh, gosh, if I'd known you were selling them. Well, I... if you'd come around a little oftener. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, shall we, uh, uh... Yes, let's. Oh, don't go, don't go. Sit down on the swing here. Yeah, but I, uh, you see, I've got something I'd kind of like to talk over with her, some... News. Well, talk it over with it right here. Uncle Moore? I know you two want to be alone. Doesn't take a lawnmower to fall on me. <laughs> you make yourselves comfortable here, and I'll just knock off for a little while, huh? Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, gosh, we don't want to interrupt your work. Then if we don't, you'll never forgive us. Huh? Uh, Marjorie, I think that's hardly fair. However, things being as they are, <laughs> I'll see you later. Oh. supper. I'm half starved. We'll have it just as soon as Leroy arrives, Uncle Moore. Leroy? It's Leroy this and Leroy that. Who the dickens is Leroy? He's the kid that used to mow the lawn, remember? Uh, yeah, and he'll mow it again, too. Well, let's be nice to him when he gets home. All right. After all, it's his first week's work, and that's a pretty big milestone for a boy. Hey, Leroy working? Mm-hmm. He's been working for Mr. Peavy this week, Dan. Oh, Soda jerk? Well, something like that. Now, Uncle Mord, I'll bet Leroy learns plenty in that drugstore. That's ridiculous. Oh, yes, he will. I'll bet you that when he... Hi, everybody! Uh... Oh, thank goodness. Bertie! Uh, Bertie! I heard him too, Mr. Gilkey. All right. Hi, folks. The toiler is home from his toil. Who's going to get my pipe and slippers? <laughs> Young man, I want you to get this through your head. You're no more important than anyone else in this house. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> He wouldn't learn anything from Mr. Peavy. Yeah, I take it all back, my dear. I'm sorry I'm late, folks, but wait till you see what I've got. Here, Marge, don't say I never did anything for you. Why, Leroy, a present. You darling. Uh, here, up. Merry Christmas. What? Why, Leroy, you shouldn't have done this. Oh, look. It's a gadget to fix the ones in stockings. Oh. Guaranteed to fix nylon, silk, anything. Go to see the fella do it. What fella? The fella I bought it from. He had a whole suitcase full of them. Oh, Leroy, it's simply marvelous. It's just what I wanted. Well, I seem to have a pencil here. Uh Oh, but that's not all, Unc. It's got two different kinds of lead and a ruler down the side with genuine millimeters on it and a flashlight on the end. Uh. (laughs) What, no banjo? (laughs) Well, thank you, my boy. I I don't know what to say, really. Oh, that's okay, Unc. You're welcome. Uh. Hey, I'd better take Bertie her present. Oh, what'd you get for Bertie, Leroy? A bracelet with rubies in it. What? Well, it might be rubies. He's really a very generous kid. He certainly is. Golly, he must have spent a pile of money on all that stuff. I'm afraid so. Thank you, Leroy. 
right. Ah, oh, forget it, Bertie. Well, it won't be long now, folks. Are you hungry? Am I? I didn't have time to make myself a soda the whole afternoon. Uh, Leroy, listen to me a moment. You've been very generous, and generosity is a fine trait. But I'm afraid you spent too much money on these presents. Oh, I don't worry, Unc. I got plenty left. I figure I'll be able to get my drum in just 14 weeks. Uh, I want to explain something to you, my boy. You're making money now. Everyone in this country is making money. Yeah. But hardly anybody is making things to sell anymore. Most of the work is going into making bullets and such for the war. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is everybody ought to spend their money on war bonds and stamps instead of things they don't need. That's the way to fight inflation. Oh, you mean I shouldn't get the drum? Oh, I didn't say that. But it'd be a very good thing if we all thought more about the war and less about ourselves. Oh, gosh, Uncle, I can't be thinking about the war all the time. Would it be easier if you knew somebody who was in it? Yeah, sure, I suppose so. But I don't. Yes, you do, Leroy. Oh, no, I don't, Mar. Thomas. Ben, can I tell? Huh? Oh, sure, I guess so. All right. Leroy, this morning, Ben got his commission in the Navy. He'll be leaving very soon to join a ship. Gosh, the Navy. Well, I didn't know about this, Ben. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, sir. The Navy. Yeah, brings war a little closer, doesn't it, my boy? Yeah. I'm me worrying about a drum. Well, now that Ben's in the Navy, I'd better buy him some bullets. I'll buy bonds, Unc. Yeah, now you're talking like a grown-up man, Leroy, and I'm proud of you. Leroy, I hate to say it, but you're wonderful. Come here. Huh? Here. I haven't got a medal for you, but... There. Oh, gosh. What's the idea of kissing people like that? No wonder Ben is joining the Navy. Well, little Leroy hasn't grown up as much as I thought he had. <laughs> grass. All you can do is mow it. Oh, these darn mosquitoes. Oh, brother, this has been one of my bad days. Throckmorton. Oh, that's you, Leela. I've been expecting you all afternoon, Throckmorton. What happened? Oh, nothing happened, Leela. I've been working here like a dog. But by George, enough is enough. I'm quitting right now. Eh, what is it you want me to do, Leela? Oh, well, it's too late now, Throckmorton. Oh, no, it's not, Leela. Oh, but it is. Leela, don't be like that. It's never too late. A man's got to have a little fun. Uh, what is it you were going to suggest that we do? Well, I thought if you got through with your lawn in time, maybe you'd help me with mine. Hmm. <laughs> That's all. Good night, everybody. <laughs> This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to listen again next Sunday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Lots of you ladies are having to use ingenuity these days to make the main dish hearty. Well, here's a very clever trick. Serve a small amount of meat or chicken or eggs or vegetables creamed in a licking good macaroni and cheese ring. And make that ring the fast way with Kraft Dinner in only seven minutes cooking time. The Kraft Dinner macaroni is a special kind that cooks fluffy tender just in boiling water. The Kraft grated in each Kraft Dinner box puts the cheese flavor through and through the macaroni in a jiffy. Press the delicious hot Kraft Dinner into a ring mold, let it set for a moment, and then serve with your creamed meat or vegetables. Or serve the Kraft Dinner macaroni and cheese all by itself. Either way, you have a real wartime special. For one Kraft Dinner box gives you macaroni and cheese for four people, and you give out just one single red ration point. Get some soon. Just ask for Kraft Dinner. This program reached you from Hollywood.